Hi everybody! I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a 30 minute soul journey session for a client and the focus is on healing the spleen. So I'm gonna go ahead and relax and, and just dive straight into this. So, okay. Healing for your spleen. Okay. There's a lot of emotional response right now. <laughs> a lot of sadness, a lot of emotional sadness. It's just like a choked up emotional sadness right now. <sighs> so I'm just helping this vent out. I mean, this is right through the gate is instantaneously this. Mm, there's a lot of negative uh, feelings about yourself stored in here as well. Like negative self-talk, negative life talk, negative talk. But it's really hard on you. I mean, it's more... I mean, how would I put this negative talk into actual words? I mean, it's not telling me exactly what you're saying here, but it's it's alluding to things like um, the way you feel about yourself, the way you feel about yourself physically, um, emotionally, mentally, the way you feel about your life and the people in your life. I mean, it's the way that you feel and it, the feelings that hurt, okay? It's the feelings that hurt and the way those feelings make you feel and how those feelings inspire you to communicate with yourself and with the world around you. And this is extremely, um, this is very much so weighing down. I don't want to call it weighing down, but it's just saturated in this. Your spleen is saturated in these emotions. It's very noticeable. And it doesn't surprise me because we're working with the emotional gut, right? So all this stuff is emotion related, you know? So the spleen is definitely digesting emotions. And these emotions aren't exactly going away. They're here. It's like maybe you had an event that took place 10 years ago and it made you feel a certain way for a while. And even if today it's not as loud or as impactful as it was, I still feel there's stuff in here, emotional stuff that has not been reconciled. And you may feel like you've moved on because time right time helps but there's still it's still holding on to it's like a like a sponge and it's full of emotional tears <laughs> and we gotta reconcile this stuff and it will really help your spleen really help okay let's see all right all right all right <laughs> the next is like so mad <laughs> like ah! like really like aggressively mad like uh, I'm gonna probably earn, gain some muscle mass here from this like ah like, I'm actually venting this out for you right now so it's like ah! super mad in here okay so there's a lot of anger in here and it's building my muscles <laughs> to help you vent it so mad oh, it's just like I mean, my fist could punch through a wall with this type of anger, and it's all in the sponge of the tears of the spleen, okay? And it's in there, and there's anger, there's sadness, there's all these emotions in there. Holy smokes. You're going to feel awesome after this. <laughs> We're venting a lot of stuff out. Okay, let me get the next thing here. Very disorienting. Okay, what's the next thing here? <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm going to transform your spleen into a little doggy. Um, I actually feel like I have a leash and I have a puppy and I'm going to take the puppy for a walk. This is interesting because I just did a session for, for a dog, but this is totally unrelated. But we're, their spleen is now a puppy, okay? And I'm taking your spleen for a little puppy dog walk. That's what this is like. And for some reason, the puppy dog just looks like like a yellow like kind of oval-shaped ball. <laughs> and it's levitating on a sidewalk with a little like leash around. It's like, I don't know, the end of the oval. <laughs> and I'm just walking this. And that's what the spleen is showing 
showing itself as in my energy world. Okay, let's see. Mm. The spleen uh, has fear. I mean, it can it can hold anxieties as well because it feels um, not. It's conscientious about what might happen, what could happen. And it's not puppy dog nature at all. This is more like, um, you know, is somebody watching me? Um, this is all, this is kind of like um, par a little bit of paranoia. Just a little bit of paranoia going on in here. And this puppy dog is not just a free, free spirit running and playing like a little child would be. No second thought about anything. Um, but this is more, uh, can't really go out and be a cheerleader here and, and yay, say yay, um, go splash in the ocean. Cause I, I feel paranoia. I mean, I feel, and paranoia here is kind of, um, stifling and, and questioning and I'm not certain and it's slowing down the walk and I'm not, um, I don't trust. I mean, I don't feel safe and I don't trust. And that's the spleen is feeling. I, I don't feel safe right now. I don't really trust that I live in a safe world. And I feel like I'm being watched right now. And I don't feel very comfortable on this walk with you right now. This is also in your spleen. Hmm. <sighs> Life events, the world itself creates feelings like this and these feelings are in there I just go to this it's like an egg yellow egg and I remove the leash because even the leash made it feel kind of like you own me you own me you force me to go places you force me so it's also reacting that way to having the leash on. So I take the leash off and then I just pick up this yellow egg and then I hug it. It's like a Pikachu or something, but it doesn't have a face or anything. Hmm. And your spleen says, I don't know that life will ever get better. Like, I don't know that there is improvement. I don't know that it will ever improve. And I don't want to live in a world like this. And if it won't improve and I don't want to live in a world like this, then what what else is there? Is really what it's saying. I mean, it's kind of like um, if A plus B, then C, and C feels like death. It does. It feels kind of like a, a, a the only thing left to do is just not to exist anymore. Your spleen is carrying feelings like this. I mean, it has saturated in it. It actually is saturated in it. And whether this is you on the day to day or this is you at times in your life, your spleen remembers and it's full of all of these memories. So I can imagine releasing this and is really going to enhance your life. I mean, I, this, this is a new thing for me, okay? So going into the spleen, I have no idea what I'm walking myself into and that what I'm discovering here, it's almost like everybody needs to heal their spleen <laughs> I can imagine like my spleen must have some of this stuff going on too but let me see what the next thing is all right I'm gonna ha I, I have to play this one out it's the it's like the it has a suicidal touch to it I mean it's a depressive nature um, it has this so I'm going to play this one out so it can self-realize and express itself openly without judgment, okay? The spleen says, I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to live anymore. And I tell the spleen, well, yeah, I mean, where's the happy motions going? Because I, I, I'm coming across a lot of the, like the hardest parts of life are stored here. 
but where's the jolly happy days? Where are those stored? Because you you should have some of those too, right? Let's see what Spleen says. Spleen also does have those emotions. Mm, and it tells me that it shows me it's there's a stability here where it keeps those emotions safe from being um, exposed to this negativity. So if this negativity, which feels like like the whole ocean, and this positivity, which feels like 2% of all drinking water uh, is, you know, <laughs> it, the, like the ocean is going to clobber all that. So um, it's protecting it. I see a wall here where the sadness dwells, and then um, on the other side is bright and cheerful. It's like a Pinkie Pie world. Like it's, it's a happy, yellow, smiling face world. So... But obviously, as a healer, I, 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 no wonder I'm being taken into this because I need to heal this and help this stuff release so we can open it up and we can really saturate it with the brightness. So that 2% is now, you know, 98% or something like this, right? <laughs> Everything's really quiet right now. Everything is hard. It feels like a difficult. Everything feels difficult. It's like, you know, it's almost too like uh, the spleen is making difficult choices, like a brain. Like, I'm trying to decide what to do. You think that would happen in the mind, in the brain, but it's actually also being processed here because it's it, what should I do comes also with emotions and memories um, to just try to make the right decision based on what you have chosen in other times in your life. So it, spleen opens up memories um, to help make choices. And spleen though is saying, you know, like what do I do or I don't know what to do. There's something kind of lingering about this. Just a minute here. It's just... Something is happening. It's not yet describable, but it's a release of some kind. It doesn't exactly come with specific emotions, but it is like agitating my my head, like worrying, you know, kind of like worrying. And uh, it's a bit denser and it's just uh, like, when will it all stop? When will it go away? When will the pain stop? When will it go away? When will the pain stop? When will it go away? It's like this. It just says that. All right, I'm going to turn your spleen into a human being. And so your spleen looks like a person. And your spleen actually reveals itself as male. And this male is, uh, I mean, the teeth are all jacked up. And, I mean, it's got really buck teeth that are coming forward so they don't lay flat. And the teeth are really weird looking. It's got snot running down its face. It's got two different sized eyes. It's got hair coming out over here and nothing else growing in real. And it's a sort of crooked or awkward standing. Um, and lanky and skinny. Hmm. And when I go to give him a hug, because he's beautiful no matter what, there's resistance here because it's already been decided what is worthy of hugs and what is not worthy of hugs. And Spleen says, um, this is not worthy of hugs. This mess, this wreck. Man, spleen starts at a very young age. I mean, spleen is like the baby absorbing everything about our world. And now as a is is sort of like stored all of this information, all of this in a program within itself, and now is helping to dictate everything um, and how you're going to fit into this world, how you're going to feel about this world, what this world is truly all about. Um, it's like a really, um, it becomes a very concerning emanation of, 
of all the suffering of our planet. And it, it's sort of like it starts as a baby. I mean, there's something in here about um, absorbing like the sponge, you know, um, more than we know that we're absorbing. And it's all in here. And it doesn't feel like necessarily just your life, but everybody's life. The people on TV, the people in movies, and the people on the radio, the um, parents, family members, friends, um, animals, everybody's life. Everybody's life has been absorbed into the spleen. And it's processing the world that you live in. And it's deciding that the world that you live in is as it has absorbed it. It can't not absorb the reality of the world you've lived in. So how do we put a shield around the spleen and say, no, spleen, you've got it all wrong. It's, it's a wonderful world. Spleen isn't about that. It, it, it's, I'm, but I'm absorbing this and it doesn't second guess what it absorbs. This is the world. This is the world. So how am I supposed to reprogram this? It's like a baby doing what babies do. They sponge it all in without even trying. It just happens. The spleen just sponges it all in and just sponged it all. And now somehow dictating, um, it's, it has a very influential mannerism about it. <sighs> Let me see what I'm supposed to do next here. Hmm. Okay, hmm. It's almost like I am to take the spleen out of your body, the energy side, okay? So I'm taking an energetic version of your spleen and then I am taking it. And it, I see myself setting it into like a Petri dish, <laughs> like some sort of lab, scientific lab dish. Um, but it's rectangular, not circular. Um, and it's not very deep and there's a liquid in here and I'm like washing it. So let me just continue to watch this here. Man, your spleen has been through the ringer. I mean, I, I, they're showing me the spleen is, it, it starts to turn a weird like bluish color. Um, and it kind of wrinkles a little bit, like really tough um, skin, but it, it's got like wrinkled effect to it. And it's tough, like it's tough meat. <laughs> and it starts to turn a light bluish color. And then it opens up here. It's almost like it likes a kidney bean or something. But it, it's opening up and then on the inside it has a kidney bean color to it. That's what it looks like. That's what they're showing me on the energy side of things. So let me see what I'm supposed to do next here. They want me to plant a seed of love and it's ain't an angel, okay? So I'm placing an angel into this. So they kind of open it up and I see like a, like a kidney bean looking color and then the angel, I'm like putting a seed of light in there and the seed of light is actually an angel. And then the angel is a... Uh, sort of branching like a tree with roots and branches and it's just going all throughout the spleen right now and the spleen then is being rehabilitated with new absorptions <sighs> new absorptions that come from an energy download you could just say because it's a sponger it's the sponges information so it's sponging in light right now and angelic energy. And as it sponges in the light and angelic energy, it's odd, but I see like chips of glass, like broken mirror. It really is what it looks like. And it sort of chips and it goes all over in here. I mean, th this would be like a kidney stone or something, but it's like little chips of mirror in here and it hurts. But the angel says no, and she touches the little chips of mirror. They're like little metallic chips, and she just touches them with her finger. And they start to uh, radiate light. And she starts to use her finger, and it's swirling it around. But I'm like, should I move this spleen back inside? Um, and she says no, and she just keeps circulating light around on the inside. And she shows me that we could see the spleen is like a human body and the inside is like the heart of the spleen. So I'm in the heart of the spleen and um, the healthiest people glow from the inside out. 
So the most balanced, energetically balanced people will glow from the inside out. And the power comes from within. It doesn't, it's not healing the outside of the spleen. It's got to come from the inside and then glow outwardly. And then the spleen glows everywhere. And she says that it's okay for the spleen to absorb reality, okay? As, as we experience reality, she says that, that that is actually okay. And, and the spleen can absorb new information too to um, balance it. So sometimes we have hard experiences in life, but we conquer them and we become more angelic ourselves. So um, so there's growth involved here. So the spleen too can grow like we can. It doesn't have to be completely hindered by all the negativity. It can be transformed. So it can accept negativity um, and it can be working with new frequencies of awareness kind of thing. Um, an energy download, um, angelic awareness, something of this nature. So it's coming from a deeper place within itself. And she's uh, asking, so there's sort of a liquid here, um, and she's wanting me to define this as a, like angelic, pure water kind of thing. Um, don't think of it as like a weird chemical or anything like that, because I, I happen to visualize this as like a science lab or something. Okay, so... Um, but we're going to wash it, okay? We're going to clean it um, with healthy angelic water, okay? So we're doing that. And it's sort of sponging it inside of itself, and it's uh, it's very refreshing. It's like, uh, like when you're really, really thirsty on a hot day, and you finally have water, and you're just chugging the living daylights out of it, and you're like, oh, oh, oh my God, I needed that. This is what it's like. <laughs> it's doing that. Hmm. there's a lot of other kind of like um I don't know like crystallized like little pieces of salt or something I mean it's like a little tiny crystally things and then the water absorbs in and it just sort of like uh, neutralizes anything dried out I don't I mean this is on the energy side of things but that's uh, there's like little hard sandy type things throughout it and I can feel that <laughs> yeah, it's really starting to glow super bright right now. And it's it's just desperately wants love, like love that you have to share, your love. And it doesn't want to absorb the love that it, you know, that now it is aware of here through this experience. It was aware of love before this experience. But it really wants you to love it. Um, wants to feel loved by you like you are the parent and the spleen is the child and it needs to be nurtured by you too sometimes and it's starving for this and um, it's asking me to take it and uh, place it within your heart so that it can feel like it is a part of your heart And it wants you to learn, too, about acceptance as well. I mean, it's saying a message here about acceptance. And I don't know how to dive into that in more detail, but there's something about learning about acceptance. And so that could be, you know, accepting some of the realities of the world that we live in that you can't change. Maybe your purpose is to change one of those things maybe your purpose is to make a difference um in one of a billion places you know the world needs a lot of different versions of love you know but not to be hindered by what you can't change you know you can ex live in acceptance of of the way children are treated animals are treated and adults are treated women men people of different colors of different cultures and we have to choose acceptance of everything. Um, and it's it, the spleen is asking you to please choose acceptance and that it's very healing for the spleen. Otherwise, the spleen has to carry the burden of what you cannot accept. And it holds it. And it feels like uh, it's digesting broken mirror inside of itself and it hurts. Mm. 
you're ashamed in your heart about this and it's really hard for you to because of ashamed be the feeling of being ashamed ashamed is an interesting emotion and um, it creates a barrier of resistance to love because you're not worthy of it and so you can't really love the spleen if you know that you've hurt the spleen in this way you feel bad about yourself now you're hurting the spleen <laughs> So you got to get over yourself. <laughs> Don't feel ashamed, okay? The spleen still loves you no matter what. Just like a child. Parents can do a lot of things and the kids still forgive them and still love them no matter what. The spleen still loves you no matter what. And so forgive yourself if you need to do that. And say, you know, I didn't know. I wasn't quite aware. And I, I'm not perfect. We're all aspiring to be more extraordinary beings. And we all have things to work on. And then we hear from the spleen and now we have a new thing to work on. It's actually wonderful. It's not bad. It's good. It's like hearing, getting defensive about something and then not being able to process it. Um, so then it gets rejected when really it should be absorbed and then you can grow from it. So this one you can grow from in the spleen can too and you can both grow together and it'll become a very harmon harmonized relationship. Very harmonized relationship. You're still struggling to um, really hold the spleen in your heart. I mean, there's still a resistance barrier here. Oh, wow. You're just crying. Like, you. here's your heart. Here's spleen. And heart's like, I love you. I love you. But it's not like embrace. It's not like the holy moment of, of the intimate loving hug. You know, it's like um, awkward hug. <laughs> but I see another version of you over here just, just sobbing, 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 sobbing. And, and, and anger, angry too. And this is a natural venting. This is coming from another digestive part of you. Um, but it's an echo of um, what your spleen has been going through and how you feel like you, you've, you um, I don't know, it, there's so much going on related to this emotional response. You're a, um, a murderer, you're a, um, you took the knife and stabbed it into your own spleen, how could you? Um, you know, and so you really uh, feel very bad about this. You are, you're actually venting like so much sadness. Um, that you did this to the spleen, but not only that, the spleen now is a reflection of, of every horrible thing that is done to children, to animals, to the planet, to adults, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, um, on and on, animal, like on and on and on and on, and, it, and it's just loud and loud, loud, like um, the pain and the suffering that we all do to our, each other and to ourselves and it never goes away and, and you know, and it's on and on and you're just venting, venting, venting all this emotion out. I mean, you needed this, by the way, and spleen is what helped you do this. So this is only going to heal you that much more. So spleen is even more awesome, gets even more gold stars for for putting you in the situation of emotional release because it's it's healthy. It's gonna it's really gonna help you. Oh, you feel so bad. You feel so bad. You don't. I mean, so again, acceptance of choices. You have no reason to feel bad. Do you or do you? Should you feel bad? Should you feel really, 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 really bad? How is that going to get you anywhere in life? That's why you shouldn't feel bad, okay? We're coming to awareness now, and this awareness is going to inspire new approaches to life, okay? I get the impression, though, that somehow the session is going to leave a little bit of an imprint of worry about on the day to day, like you might worry about, oh, I'm, I'm really upset about this thing. I'm hurting my spleen now. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay. Cause, cause it's a lifetime. 
all right? We are, you're going to have bad days, all right? You're going to have awesome days. Even the best, the people living the bestest of lives have bad days, all right? And they hurt their spleen. <laughs> they hurt a lot of their body, but at the same time, they're actually healing and venting and growing. So when we have hard days, we're actually healing and venting and growing. We are not destroying. But if we hold on to the hardship, we can be quite destructive only to rebuild and to heal and to grow again. You see, that is the nature of life. So just continue to just use this as awareness, okay? And love your spleen, you know? Give it a hug every now and then and to know it's safe to vent. So okay to have emotions. You are meant to have emotions. Spleen is here to um, process that. Your spleen, though, is quite full of that um, really hard emotions, which are starting to alleviate because of the angelic seed that was planted, okay? <laughs> that helps, too. All right, let me see what else here. Okay, coming back to the heart, and the heart is, uh, is very shy, but is uh, actually created a gift um, as its way of um, hugging the spleen because it just needs this gift to be accepted by the spleen to know that it is um, okay and then it will feel safe to hug the spleen. It's like a child that's on time out and now wants to give mom or dad a flower in order to make things right and then now can receive hugs properly. So your heart is kind of acting like this. Mm. But it's all, it's all your energy bodies and your belief systems and everything that is human about you that is creating this interaction. Very innocent, though. I don't know what it is, this gift you're giving spleen, but it looks just like the color red, okay? And it just looks like, like red. And then you just take red and then you hand it to spleen. That's, that's all. It's like take a marker and then just create the color red and then hand the color red to spleen. That's what's happening here. <clears throat> spleen takes the color and is analyzing um absorbing it's downloading what was expressed in red all right so in red i'm discovering is like a dna strand of information that expresses um so much more than a human being abby can say <laughs> But it's extremely meaningful. It's like sending your grandma a card if you haven't seen her in like three years and how much your grandma would appreciate that, right? So it's just ridiculously meaningful for the spleen right now to receive this information encoded in red. And it starts to show me how, uh, how much uh, lighter it is and it's starting to... Um, starting to allow itself to just be whole, okay? Not separating um, negativity from positivity, but allowing that to feel a wholeness. So sometimes the negativity and the positivity work together. The dark and the light work together. The yin and the yang work together. So there is no separation between what is good, what is bad. You know, it can all be good. All of it can. So now spleen is working, circulating all, okay? All the emotions. And it starts to feel natural. It's like cleaning the pool filters out here. It's like I, I start to see um, it just looks so much cleaner in the jet streams. I don't, it just, I feel that. <clears throat> it's the only way I could describe it. It feels just so natural. So I'm going to play spleen, energy spleen back in, in spleen area. <laughs> Yeah, this I can tell this is going to mean a lot to you. I can already feel the response that's taking place is a very meaningful response. It's a warming feeling as well. It's got like a natural warming feeling to it. It's got a jade feeling to it, like a gentle warming Cir blood circulating, um, got plenty of water in the bloodstream feelings, cleaning, purifying it out. There's something to the feeling here that feels purifying. 
and hot at the same time. Like things are heating up and I'm feeling more purified and I've got plenty of fluids. It's like a good feeling. Good, healthy feeling. Okay, that's all I have to share. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was very, very interesting. Very rare to be requested to heal the spleen. Very rare. So that was uh, that was new for me. That was really interesting. It makes me want to go check on my own spleen now. <laughs> all right. Thank you for exploring the session with me and for your willingness to share. And uh, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you all for watching, and I wish you all a wonderful day.